Hello and welcome to another edition of No Nonsense with Pamela Wallen. This is a mini pod to start our new season. I'm going to read something to you. I'm borrowing somebody else's words here. With their wide brimmed hats, suspenders, string ties, and long black coats, Canada's The Dead South looks like a cross between old country Quakers and the last gunfighters to survive the shootout at the OK Corral. There's Nate Hill sitting there. I love that line. It's funny. It's true. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I think uh, I think that was a, a great line. It is a great <laughs> line. So Nate Hiltz, who is the founder and the the lead singer and the lyricist and plays the guitar and the mandolin for the Dead South, also happens to be my neighbor at Fishing Lake. So way back when, when we were starting to do this pod, Nate was one of our very first guests and we had a really great conversation. But the the band has just kind of taken off. You're you're just I don't know. This is you're on a you're on a world tour, quite literally. Yeah, yeah, we're actually very fortunate. We we came out on the other side of the pandemic with lots of shows to play, which is really good. You worked through the pandemic, as I know, because and you were you know recording things with your bandmates on on Zoom and with others, and really trying to. What was going through your head? I mean, nobody really knew whether we were going to come out the other end of that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at first it was just a nice break. The whole world shut yeah. down. So it was yeah. kind of like, you know, all badness aside, it was like everyone has to stay still. So that was yeah. a nice break. And then you look at your watch and it's been a year. And then you yeah. look at your watch and it's been 18 months. And it's then it's like, what is going to happen? Are we going to get to do this thing again? Will the world be the same after this with, you know, being out in public, being able to do live shows yeah. or, will, you know, that just change all around. So there was a little bit of, you know, what if, and then a little bit of positivity being like, this is going to get better and things will get back to normal, I think. When you headed back out, I think it was, it was Europe first, wasn't it? That, that kind of opened up. Uh, yeah, we, we started in, U.S. and Europe. Okay. Yeah. And they were just a little bit more willing to risk it than than Canada. Yeah, in a way, for sure. I mean, you know, we we had these tickets sold before the pandemic, so we were right. playing sold out shows, but you were getting a turnout of 60, 70 percent only. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of people that, you know, either forgot about it from the, how, many, how much time had passed, <laughs> you know, people that still didn't want to go outside, people that were just over it. So yeah. yeah, it was a big mix. So the the reason that I mean this really strikes me, you are playing in early February the Grand Old Opry. Like this is huge. You did the Ryman Auditorium last um fall. I can't remember when. Uh, but like that's this is a really, really big deal. And to do the Grand Ole Opry, I mean, this is amazing in terms of where you are on the musical uh, line here. Yeah, it's it's very impressive. It, and it just came out of nowhere. We had a, a meeting with our band of managers, which you do every Wednesday. And yeah. they just kind of nonchalantly brought it up like, oh, by the way, guys, the Grand Ole Opry uh, threw it an offer for you guys to come play February 10th um, at the Variety Show. So. Which like, wow. absolutely, yeah. Because you're really hard to place. I mean, um, for those, I mean, people will go and listen if you don't already know. Just go on YouTube, go somewhere and listen to the Dead South because it is a unique sound. I mean, you're kind of called bluegrass, but the influences are everything from punk to rock to like. How did this sound actually develop for you guys? Well, it developed very naturally because, yes, people call us bluegrass because the idea was we were going to be, you know, try and be like a new wave bluegrass band kind of thing. <laughs> uh, but what naturally came out is what you hear. You know, there's a little bit of bluegrass influence. There's a little bit of country. There's a little bit of punk and metal rock. And there's a little bit of country and folk. And it all just kind of whatever we're feeling that day, someone puts it something out and then the rest of the guys combine their forces. And then it just delivers this sound of whatever the other person hears and then they bring out. So yeah, it makes us very hard to place. 
Uh, we yeah, don't but, call it. but it's, <laughs> it's interesting that the country world or the, you know, the uh, is really embracing in that way. I mean, to do Ryman, to be part of the Grand Ole Opry, like that's a, that's an interesting, they're, they're kind of taking you in saying, okay, we don't, uh, others may not know you where you belong, but we're good with this. Yeah, I, it seems like it. And it's really been beneficial in a lot of ways. We never get to be the cool guys in any genre. <laughs> you know, so that that's kind of one thing, but we get to, to play around. Like we get to go to metal festivals. We get to go to punk festivals, bluegrass festivals, country festivals, folk festivals. So it's yeah. nice in that sense. Like, I think you did Glastonbury in, in England, which is, you know, woo, woo, that kind of stuff. <laughs> it's everything. Glastonbury is everything. Yeah. Yeah. So... I think in the days back, I mean, when I first saw um, the band play, ladies and gentlemen, this was at the Karaoke Hall. This is the first time I saw them live. So Karaoke is a town, what, Nate, 30 people? Yeah, uh, I believe so. 25, 30 people uh, beside where we live, and they've got a local hall, and that's where all the fall suppers are, and and any kind of music thing they play pickleball in the winter i mean <laughs> you name it and there were your guys because it, it was home and you've done some videos uh with the area in it what was you don't you do what is it murder at the el karaoke which is the bar oh, in town? <laughs> yeah massacre, massacre massacre of el karaoke yeah <laughs> I switched the name a little bit so it wasn't too similar, but you know. Yeah, yeah, so it wasn't too similar. So this was really, I mean, I I'd heard the band, but I hadn't seen the band. And it was um it was really quite something. What do you think clicks? Like you call your fans, and I think this was the name of your first album, Good Company. You call your fans good company. Like what is it that connects? Well, we I'm just going to touch on that part real quick. Our fans okay. call themselves things. They've kind of come yeah. together. So good companies become like this fan club, the good company. Yeah. Fan. Okay. Um, but the, our fans call themselves cousins, which is even better. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, there's that, but what, what makes is it that, the dueling banjos? And I mean, this is okay. <laughs> little cousin love and you know, that's what they're going yeah. for. There. So uh, yeah. What brings this out in people? I'm not really sure. Um, maybe it's the fact that we touch a little bit of everywhere. So there's a little yeah. bit for everyone, you know, there's storytelling, there's musician, musicianship. Yeah. It's just like straight up fun. When you go to the shows, you're getting a good atmosphere. Yeah. So I think it's just a mix of a bunch of different things. You took off in Europe first, almost before Canada embraced. And do you know why? Well, we went so yeah we were a band starting basically 2012 yeah and we did mostly saskatchewan alberta uh manitoba and bc that was kind of our main yeah. thing and then we went out to yeah. toronto for a first time and then uh, a german delegate was there and he saw us he was going to come for one song he stayed for the whole show wow and that was a good sign it was like i like you guys come over to germany and then from there we kept going and people were so excited that first of all that we were just a canadian band these people right. that had never heard of us before so they were coming out just to see canadians play and then they kind of started coming to the shows more and more and then that word of mouth was spreading and i think that there's this like western mystique for them mm. where they, you know they're they're really enjoying this like storytelling of what what we have to bring and and they just embrace that as something cool and niche maybe and yeah it's it just kept exploding really, it's such a it's such a high risk business, you know, I mean, it does in the end have to do with talent, but for people to get a chance to see that talent, it's sometimes just a fluke. Oh, absolutely. You just never know. Like I know lots of people who just stay in the city or their yeah. respective cities and they never really get out there. And it's so unfortunate because their musicianship is incredible, you know, yeah. So yeah, there's a little bit of fluke in there. Uh, definitely some luck, hard work, and hopefully yeah, a lot of hard work gets together. Yeah. 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 So, how many shows will you do in 2024? Uh, this is so 2023 was a light year. Yeah. We, uh, we kind of took a little more time off, which is good. So this year we're coming back, and 
this is kind of how we're trying to hold it for a while is about 100 shows in the wow. year that's a lot it is but that's way less than we used to try and do yeah <laughs> in the early days you just get in the van and drive and you try and pump out 250 shows 300 shows a year if you could yeah. but now this is bigger i mean you're you know now that you've achieved some level of success new album coming out too right yes exactly yeah Beans and a lot bigger chains and stakes and then so you get to that so you have bigger venues you're going to do massey hall the revamped massey hall in toronto too in next december i think i'm going to try to go to that one yeah right on yeah it'll be great yeah, really excited okay. to be there. it's a wonderful venue well, I just wanted to, I just, I don't know, the whole notion of you guys really breaking through and, and uh, for me personally, the Grand Ole Opry, that's to me, that's the ultimate. I know that there's success on so many other levels. So I just wanted to catch up and encourage people to go and see you if they get a chance. It's really interesting music. And as you say, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. You guys that's actually true. like each other, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've been friends for a long time. Two yeah. of the guys, we've been friends since kindergarten. And then uh, Colt and I, we all met him in university, and we've been friends since then. So, yeah. yeah, a lot of long-term relationships. Yeah, and family first, kind of friends and family first is how you deal with it. Because some of the guys now have kids, and it makes it harder to be on the road. Yeah, exactly. So it's finding that medium of still going out and working, trying to work less, um but do better for ourselves so that we can be off longer with the families yeah, yeah. no i think you i think it's an interesting way to get a little balance in your life some of us aren't very good at it so please learn <laughs> <laughs> from our mistakes so new album out chains and stakes and and literally a hundred city tour so you're going to find them somewhere wherever you are and we're going to close uh nate because you know this is my favorite song and I know I should be playing something from your from your new album, but we're just going to hear a little bit of this interesting take on You Are My Sunshine. And then you'll get a sense of um, I don't you don't really make the traditionalists that mad. But boy, they must wonder what you're doing with this music. Eh? Oh, sometimes. Yeah. Some some of them are into it. Some absolutely despise it. So, yeah. Anyway, you will make up your mind as an audience here. So here's a little bit of Nate Hills and the dead south and you are my sunshine good luck we'll talk soon you are my sunshine my only sunshine you make me happy when skies are gray you'll never know dear how much i love you please don't take my sunshine Sunshine away.